Someone's cursing, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's puffling, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's growing, my lord. Late night lunch. Oh lord, late night lunch. This is a post watershed production. Avast, John Scurvy Sea Dogs! I, Blissbeard, be your captain aboard this ship of the damned, and please welcome a man synonymous with booty hunting seamen, first mate large. <laughs> that was a good one, even for you. That was quite good. Mike, would you like to uh, would you like to tell everyone what the theme is tonight? If they hadn't figured it out, uh, puppies. <laughs> good work. No, uh, piracy. Yeah, finally, it's the uh, Late Night Large edition, which celebrates piracy in all its glory. What's your initial thought on piracy? What do you think of when somebody says that word? Taping uh, things in cinemas. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a pirates, pirates something that... Uh, they're usually the kind of thing that, as a kid, the kind of thing that you, you love to kind of affiliate with. I mean, let's face it. If you if you hear the word pirate when you're a kid, it stands for adventure. <clears throat> I mean, it's a it's a terrain that can finish you in a second. It's it's got danger all of its own, and that's without the ships, the uh, albatrosses, and all kinds of other dangers. No, I mean, if you ask me now, then I can think of plenty of worse <clears throat> things than being a pirate, but probably not when I was a kid. More, you well, you associated them with bad didn't you and no one thinks oh I want to be a real arsehole when I'm <laughs> and yet so many people grow up to be them now, obviously this is an opportunity to educate both ourselves and hopefully our listeners on uh, the most famous pirates through the ages I mean Blackbeard do you know much about Blackbeard if you were to ask anybody about the most famous real pirate they could think of surely that would be the first name on their lips it would have been the first name I'd have <coughs> come up with yeah if you'd ask me yeah Long do you know, silver. Uh, do you know, Mike? Real pirates. Do you know? Do you know much about Blackbeard? Uh, I had a black beard. A good one. Anyway, he was a he was a pirate of the Caribbean area. Apparently, he was a, he was very well educated for a pirate and literate, um, and had weakness for women. So, other than the well educated and literate part, he has quite a lot in common with you. <laughs> You're an asshole. <laughs> More facts you might be interested in, Mike, and I'm sure you'd um, you'd admire. He was said to have up to 14 wives, and his last one was 14 years old. Whoa, whoa! The 14 honeys thing. Yeah, I, mean, I can uh, I can compete with that, but I wouldn't go for 14 year old. I mean, that's okay. that's way too old. Yeah, <laughs> young. <laughs> yes, young. I meant young. Brilliant, Mike. And basic and interestingly as well. Aside from uh, you know the broadsides and the cannon fire from the ships as they approached, I've got a pretty impressive cannon. Uh, yeah, aside from the cannon fire and the broadsides and what have you, as they captured the ships, uh, Blackbeard was not known to have actually tortured or killed anyone under his command. So uh, he basically relied on his fearsome reputation and didn't have to uh, indiscriminately slaughter or torture people once he'd uh, boarded their ship because they'd, they'd uh, willingly surrender. Fair play to him. Easy way to do it, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite cool, isn't it? Uh, have you ever heard of Black Bart? No. Bartholomew Roberts, he's actually known as the most successful pirate of all time, pretty much. How do you measure success? Rumour has it, rumour has it that he, uh, he plundered as many as 400 ships. Now, would you not call that successful? I've done some plundering in my time, but that's, that sounds pretty successful. That, that is. And Black Bart, again, he was uh, he stood out because he was uh, apparently exceptionally well-dressed and good-looking. He uh, Basically, the reason he was so successful is literally he had a blitz mentality. He attacked any ship that came close, including uh, supposedly superior warships. So, you know, that's one way of being successful, is just attack absolutely everything. 
your odds go up, don't you, with success? Surely your odds would go down a little bit if you're attacking a, sup- a superior warship. Ah, but then it comes down. Surely then it comes down to how far are you willing to go? Bear in mind, I mean, there's been many examples through the ages. I can think of Zulu, the film, and obviously based on real circumstances, being the obvious example yeah. of where a superior force can be overcome by just ferocity. If you have you know even half as many or less than that as many men but you go into the battle i suppose he was good at what he did well yeah it enabled him to how far are you willing to go that that's the secret of success if you're willing to go further than the next person doesn't matter if they're i mean look like gay chicken what like gay chicken what the hell does that mean you know what gay chicken is why don't you explain to me what gay chicken means Mike? basically it's when you challenge another normally uh, straight bloke yes. to do <laughs> gay yeah. things. To do gay uh, things. It can be. I mean, when you're younger, it can be like anything from like sliding your hand up your leg, this kissing worryingly with, with, with kissing. Basically, you go to kiss the other person, and whoever pulls out first loses. All oh, right, you take it further than the other person, and I know. always win. I'm straight, but I don't like losing, and I have done questionable things oh. in order <coughs> right. to win. So again, I can he, he's that. done. He was willing to do a lot in order to win. Oh, he was Jesus. well dressed and handsome, and he did a lot of plundering. So uh, me and him. Well, basically, Black Bart was also the last of what they termed the golden age of pirates as well. The following section has been removed due to copyright infringement. Sorry about that. Fight the power. So, Black Bar, obviously we've just finished uh, discussing. Mike, have you, I've, I'm sure you haven't, but you know... Why was he called Black Bar? Uh, I, I think it's just like a scary name. I don't know where you're going with this, Mike. I'm asking a question. I, I think it was just an intimidating pirate name. I think that's the only reason. After Blackbeard? Possibly, yeah. Well, no better way of uh, making a name for yourself than leeching off the popularity of something else. They're around at the same time? I guess not. I think similar. Blackbird was a... Blackbird? Blackbird? Who the fuck is that? That sounds like the the lamest pirate of all time. (laughs) (laughs) I am the Blackbird! (laughs) It just flies from ship to ship, pecking you. Uh, Or shitting on your head. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, Mike. (laughs) Well, no, I I kind of get your point. Maybe he was leeching off the... Uh, success or the notoriety of Blackbeard. I uh, thought we mentioned some of the more famous female pirates. Obviously, it wasn't male dominated. Uh, Grace O'Malley was uh, a, a famous Irish pirate, and she was actually a political kind of pirate because the whole way through her life, she uh, attempted quite uh, violently at times to defend Irish independence against the British Crown. So, and she actually lived to seventy years old. So she was a relatively successful pirate, and uh, her notoriety was... I, I think I think she did fall from grace, but uh, by the end of her life... <laughs> I didn't even realise. But yeah, she, she, uh, she was awarded her influence and, and power back before the end of her life, so she was what you consider probably a successful and... Uh, a bitch. No. Well, no. Well, I mean, the Irish would, would love her, surely. Anyway... More pirates. Edward Lowe? That name ring any bells? No. Low by name, low by nature, apparently. He was uh, known as one of the most savage pirates of all time. Right? Scary guy. Well, among among the actions he apparently was known to do, uh, to, you know, obviously crew members that he'd uh, he'd captured... He was known to chain, mutilate, burn, and even force his captives to eat the heart of their captain. Well, you look at Blackbeard. <coughs> Black, Blackbeard relied on his mainly his appearance and his reputation for successful captures without being violent. So he's quite a passive, very image conscious. I'm pirate. sure he could uh, turn on the nastiness if he needed to. Perhaps, but like you say, there's no record of him doing that. Whereas Edward Lowe he was a complete bastard most people would uh, say a psychopath sadistic as hell and you know him black low black low <sighs> well yeah I mean I'm sure pirates had a very limited vocabulary so perhaps Captain William Kidd 
I'm sure you have heard of Captain Kidd. He, uh, he's been immortalised in many fictional pieces, I believe, but he's most famous for being essentially one of the most incompetent pirates of all time. Because he was initially uh, a privateer, uh, just to outline the difference between privateer and pirate generally uh, a privateer was essentially a pirate that was sanctioned by government so it was a group that was sent out outside of government control so for instance if you didn't want your military or navy specifically going out to capture enemy ships obviously this is during wartime the government would actually pay privateers to go on private raids on enemy ships so he was a, a ri- originally a privateer or what they would say a private a pirate hunter as well he was you know he was sanctioned to to hunt pirate ships yeah and he was a uh, he was a pretty unfortunate bastard because uh like i say he got turned in by his own crew betrayed his his wife was arrested and apparently he was kept in uh, such bad conditions in uh, in prison it sent him insane eventually before he was executed even his execution was botched which uh, again highlights his bad luck his first hanging the rope broke he was hanged at the second attempt and then just to like the ultimate indignity to end it with he was uh, he was gibbeted which is hung in an iron cage i guess on a jetty or something to to basically warn incoming ships what happens to pirates so yeah captain kidd was he, not only an incompetent pirate but he uh, he was very very unfortunate anyway captain kidd was also famous as well uh, and has been immortalized many times for his mythical buried treasure apparently 200 bars of gold and rick's dollars manifold do we know where <laughs> another female pirate mary reed I don't know if you've ever heard that name. She uh, she was famous for pretending to be a man. I don't think she had a very nice upbringing. She was a fairly successful pirate, although she was rescued a few times by uh, empathetic female pirates. She only escaped execution by claiming to be pregnant, which she was. And then, just to top it off, she actually died in prison with her child. Like, a carrying child. With fever. So it wasn't a very nice end. Thanks for that one. Well, yeah, that's that's kind of the the roster of the most the more famous pirates, but obviously, some mythical pirates uh, or literary pirates that we've left off, obviously include Captain Hook, Captain Nemo, Orm the Red, One-Eyed Willy, the Pepper Pirates, Long John Silver, Captain Jack Sparrow, and my favourite, Captain Pugwash. <laughs> what a man! What a man indeed. We're. <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, we'll be back in a few minutes. Uh, after we've watched, uh, after we've had our timbers shivered. Ah, piracy be wrong, says I. Any scurvy bilge rats co- sharing copyright material be walking a gangplank. Piracy. When we say piracy, obviously we think of, like, say, the classic pirates of olden times. It seems an anachronism. A little bit like highwaymen. And yet, piracy in some areas of the world is bigger today than ever. And the obvious example is Somali pirates. Anything to uh, to kickstart the discussion? They were on the news recently, weren't they? Did I imagine that? Probably not. They, Did, um, uh, if they, if they captured someone and they're holding a ransom the most under threat regions or the, the most unstable regions and regions most likely to attract piracy Gulf of Guinea, Somalia obviously uh, the Strait of Malacca and Falcon Lake uh, seaborne piracy against transport vessels does remain a significant issue and costs a hell of a lot of money to the uh, whichever country is involved in, the, in the, the ships that are captured or robbed billions a year, particularly in the waters between the Red Sea and the Indian Ocean, off the Somali coast, uh, the Strait of Malacca and Singapore, which are used by over 50,000 commercial ships a year. A lot of potential uh, piracy there. One of the big issues is the fact that the countries that the pirates derive from are usually countries on which most of the population live on poverty wages. And you know what? What what motivation do you have to do anything but plunder ships? Another thing that 
throws uh, the whole thing off kilter is the, the denomination of international waters because obviously international waters are the waters in the ocean which uh, don't officially belong to any one country which means that there essentially are no enforceable laws in these areas and this is a uh, this apparently has, has led to some pretty, I guess, frustrating situations for authorities, especially if they capture pirates. I mean, we were just reading about a, a case where the Finnish government had, uh, had actually captured pirates and sunk their vessel, but they there was no way that they could uh, prosecute because the pirates weren't actually attacking a vessel belonging to their nation, and the pirates weren't Finnish or from any EU country. So technically there's there's no there's no method to prosecute. What do you think, Mike? Finnish government sunk the pirate ship. Yeah. Cle- I mean clearly they they had good reason. Clearly they realized that they were committing acts of piracy. So piratical raids. So wh- who why who was trying to be prosecuted then? I don't understand. Well, if you well, capture like, if you capture the pirates, right? The pirates uh, weren't specifically attacking a Finnish ship, so they weren't attacking their own personal interests and their nationality. They weren't from Finland or any other EU country, so technically the Finnish government has no uh, jurisdiction right. to prosecute them. What did they do in the end? Do you know? I I don't think it has a, any closure. Should have just killed the fuckers out at sea. Well, you know, some people might say if you, uh, if you sunk their ship it. with with the man, it, it might solve a few problems. To put a bit of meat on the bones, uh, the modern definitions of piracy, <laughs> <laughs> the modern definitions of piracy include the acts of uh, boarding, extortion, hostage taking, kidnapping of people for ransom, murder, robbery, sabotage resulting in the ship being sunk, basically, seizure of items or the ship itself. And deliberate shipwrecking. Extortion, eh? Extortion. I know quite a few places that could be accused of piracy, then. (laughs) Very good. I'm guessing what they mean by extortion is threat, well, just threat against the crew, isn't it? Yeah. As in, we will kill you unless you hand over all this stuff. Yeah, As as opposed to ransom, uh, where you'd obviously contact uh, their family or their government or, I don't know, their company demand payment I do be- I believe that there's a hell of a lot of uh, there's a hell of a lot of money that's paid out in ransom to pirates did you know that? I can imagine there would be yeah because it's not like I mean obviously the US government uh, which at the best of times is corrupt and self-serving but uh, obviously one of the, the laws that was put in place for uh, one of the constitutional points I think that was put in place for very good reason in the US was not to negotiate with terrorists but obviously, but they negotiate with pirates. Yeah, but it's completely different, isn't it? Because terrorists is an act of aggression or terrorism against the government, whereas piracy is an independent act. Unless they're specifically acting against a U.S. vessel, technically, what you're doing is not uh, you're, you're not actually negotiating in terms of an attack on the government. You're you're just trying to get independent say US citizens or something out of a situation but still it, I mean obviously the governments don't like shelling out money especially to pirates so it's, it's tricky but you know international waters you know what they say anything goes that's true I should get myself out to uh, these waters I was thinking that myself water. to be honest um, you know get out in international waters might you can uh you know, marry all the fourteen-year-olds you want. I told uh, you, I told you. <laughs> do you. Do you remember that there was a? <laughs> I need to acquire myself a vessel. Oh, God, there was a classic Simpsons episode where uh, Homer goes out into international waters. Yeah, I remember. And that um, was they have monkey knife fights. I think that'd yeah, be pretty yeah. cool. And uh, there's also Dredrick Tatum having a boxing match with a horse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that's pretty cool. But, but um, immoral. You shouldn't. Of course. Animals. No, or children. Uh, maybe children but not animals uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah pirate economics there, there's actually there's been studies uh, done on pirate economics uh, which suggest that it's actually a growing market that's capitalism for you we actually discuss these kind of uh, cr- crimes of extortion 
uh, as emerging markets, much like we might discuss uh, the drug trade as, the, as a, a dominant market. I mean, it's a good question, isn't it? What What's to put... This is all about uh, deterrence, isn't it? How do you put off people who live in a nation that have nothing? How do you put them off from going out to sea and attacking wealthy ships when the uh, the risk is pretty minimal when you consider the gains? Can't say I wouldn't do it. That's the thing, isn't it? I, I'd I'd be a, I'd be a liar if I said that I wouldn't consider it if I was in that position. Obviously, we would never condone torture or murder, but there's there's fairly the statistics are fairly good. It's I'm actually like, a low proportion of pirates seizing ships who actually do torture or kill the people, especially if the ransom's paid. I reckon I could eradicate that small proportion of, <laughs> of nastiness, unnecessary nastiness. Oh, okay. okay. Do you want to go on? So, I seize myself a vessel, right, and I base myself in international waters. So that's where uh, where I park my uh, my ship up, <laughs> and I live there doing what the hell I want um, because there are no ways to govern me or ways that you can legally ruin my pie, and then. I say to all the uh, oh, I say to Robin Hood. I say to all the pirates, so like, no, you stay at home on your farms, looking after your land, <laughs> and and being all poor and that. And uh, and I'll go, I'll go, I'll go and and steal from the rich. Do you know what that's? Uh, if if I say look, I'll do, really I'll do all the piracy, <laughs> and I'll steal from the rich. <laughs> I'll keep a bit for myself. I'll wow. give I'll give to the poor. That way, it's responsible piracy, because I can then be responsible for all the piracy that goes on. I don't on. think responsible. I can see to it is the right word. That, that none of the bad things happen, like the rape and the murder. I think moral rather than responsible, because Cause crime is hit. not responsible. So you're calling it moral piracy? Would you say that? I by the way, I think yeah. that it's got it's got the makings of a, a very good well, if not book, it's got the makings of a good article. I'm going to write a book on it. Seafaring Robin Hood. You can you can hold me to that as well. What should I call my character though? Black Hood. Black. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely Black Hood. It's gonna it is gonna be Black Hood now. Yeah. But what's his real name gonna be? A birth name. But birth name. Yeah. What? Well, it's na- his real name. Can't be, it's not gonna be not gonna be christened Black Hood, is it? <laughs> <laughs> so what? Michael Lard is unacceptable. No, we can't name it after me. Uh, oh, I thought this was going to be I'm you. The, I thought yeah, you I'm were the assuming the character. I'm the real life hero. I'm writing a book about oh, it now. Sorry, right? okay. Uh, <laughs> do you know what? I'll have a think about it. We'll come back after the uh, the next track. Get your stinking rat out. It's late night large. Okay, Mike. I think the name that we're going to christen the character with, who will become the Black Hood, is going to be Calvin Brunt. Calvin Brunt? Yeah. I think that's... Uh, that's a good name. Why Calvin Brunt? It's just a name I feel that like came I'm to missing me. something here. No, that's that's just a name that came to me. Uh, Cal- smirk on your face. Anyway, it's not Calvin Brunt. His name's going to be Jerome. Say, <laughs> Jerome Simpson, and he's he he uh, originates from streets of Brooklyn and gets lucky wins a competition gets a boat decides he's going to live in international waters where I'd he can have the life he, he never had on, in, in the ghetto well no one's going to ever have a life like international waters there it's you go a long party isn't it and you know he takes takes his, his posse <laughs> <laughs> can I just be clear that I'm having no part of how this d- racist how fantasy it's not racist you can't have I'm portraying him as a hero. You can't have an African American character called the Black Hood. That is as racist Why? as it comes. Oh, like if you can't figure it out, it doesn't matter. <laughs> no. In my mind, he's not black. All right, he's the Black Hood, but he's not black. It's my pissing character, oh. and he's black, and his name's Jerome. He. I get how the feeling. I, I get the feeling that you seem so. to be. I get the feeling that you seem to be basing this character on Shaft. No. 
Is it no. what you mean? No, I genuinely don't know what you mean. Who's but the black I, private dick? No, I know what you mean, but no, I, no, I'm not basing it. Shaft! On oh, Shaft. Um, <coughs> how, do, how do I get him to meet the, the pirates? How, to meet the pirates? Well, he's got to say to the pirates at some point... In some is, is that, that an way. alternative version of meet the parents? <laughs> meet the poppers. <laughs> meet the be- yeah. <laughs> oh, no, he's, God. No, he's, he's, meet the pirates. He's got to, you know, he has to tell them at some point, stop being a pirate and uh, let me do it for you. Do you know how most pirates work their way up? Hit me. Most of them, I think, started uh, just as... Deckhands. Yeah, but as cabin boys and whatever else on uh, on seafaring ships. Either privateers or or at least legal uh, vessels. Um, although some of them did happen to uh, stir away or... or or chance upon finding work on pirate vessels and just work their way up until they got their own ship. If you were, you know, if you're an apprentice under a under a bloodthirsty captain, it's not really the done thing to then usurp the captain. So once you got to that level where you felt like you were a, you were ready to be a captain, you'd have to find your own ship. I'm sure your captain wouldn't be very happy about that. Uh, uh, I'm way, sure he'd be happier than if you like tried. Oh, of course, yeah, but. He'd Overthrowing him, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, but what if you come across each other? Well, you know, he, there you go. That's the you risk you take. Up, you yeah, that's up, the risk you're you a take. Young master against servant, yeah. And you know, and you, you're you got this ferocious captain, and one day you, you know you've learned a lot from him, and you say, look, listen, Black Hood, I'm uh, <laughs> God's sake. I'm gonna I'm gonna go my own way here. I appreciate what you've done for me, but I need to go. Leave me on this island. I'll uh, I'll plunder myself a ship using my cunning that I learnt from you. You know, I'll start off by myself. I'll accumulate my own crew, and uh, you find yourself five years down the line in the same waters, going for the same vessel. Then what? Well, it's funny you Would should there be say some that? sort of pirate <coughs> code. Well, yeah, that some sort of the, truce. The protege might turn against the master. There might be a truce, but you know, it's well documented that pirates actually have had a very good sense of democracy and uh, hierarchy on board the ship and ethics. Yeah, in fact, mm. when the uh, when the yeah, no, seriously, when the uh, booty was divided up. <laughs> booty. When the booty was divided up, I divide your booty. The uh, the captain didn't have overall say. The the crew could vote against him. It was. Uh, I'm sure that didn't doesn't work. You know, all ship. No, no, no. Well, pretty much, pretty much all ship. You think about it, Mike. As a captain controlling, I don't know. Let's say thirty, forty crew members. It might be funny, but unless you have their total respect, you're gonna be pretty screwed. If they suddenly decide to turn against you, you know, th- uh, cut your throat and throw you overboard. The captain needed to maintain authority, first of all, out of respect, i.e., uh, you know, first of all, out of fear. Well, out of fear. If there's some insubordination from an odd crew member, you know, if you just shoot him in the head, rest of the crew, they're not going to try and, you know, rise up. But at the same time, you've also got to, as well as the stick, you've got to have the carrot. You've got to make them think, you know, they're sharing in this success. Nobody's going to uh, continue to support a crew where the pi- you know the captain gets 90% of the booty and you know it's just like little scraps amongst the rest and yet that's kind of our political system really so I don't know I guess sometimes you, you can fool that. you can fool all the people all the time I don't think a bit well wealthy interest support it yeah <laughs> anyway speaking of wealthy interest Mike we've spoken about typical piracy for long enough but we all know that piracy has another face. Why don't we start talking about the other kind of piracy? There is no other type of piracy to me. <laughs> I'm talking about the piracy... I'm talking about copyright piracy. Piracy I first mentioned when you yeah. asked me. About yeah, it. of course. Well, that, this was always going to be where we're going. And obviously it's very topical because of the, uh, the SOPA and ACTA bills, which luckily are being crushed... But are still trying to be forced through. If if you're unfamiliar with these, obviously these are generally, uh, I, th- I think they were generally thought up and uh, initially proposed in the U.S. Mainly forced by corporations. 
these acts essentially were going to crush online piracy by basically shutting down sites that weren't completely responsible for everything that was posted on them. Haven't some sites been shut down, though? Yeah, but that's different. If you look at the sites that have been shut down, there's not much defence against these sites. I'm not saying that I'm against them, but, you know... What, which is the site that's been shut down? Mega Upload, was it? Mega Upload dot com. Yeah, it's been shut down. Uh, but apparently, that did have some legal functions. But obviously, a major part of it was people uploading copyrighted material for other people to share. Now, whether you like corporations or not, personally, I don't. <coughs> personally, I think that the only person who who should have overall claim to a copyright is the creator rather than some big wig CEO but then I guess you know they've paid the money to have the copyright so you know legally it is theirs let's talk about old school piracy which obviously has technologically advanced but let's let's talk about the classic piracy first of all cinema piracy no, where you stand at the back of the cinema with your yeah. recorder <laughs> no, people I, stand up you get ahead in the way I, I used to find that incredible I, I thought that was a myth but apparently it used to happen that people would actually go into a cinema armed with a video camera and bear in mind that obviously in the 80s video cameras even personal video cameras were very clunky and heavy so you'd get someone who you know they'd have to go through a, a bit of discomfort to hold that on their shoulder or hold it steady at least for an entire movie and where were the ushers? How can an usher not spot someone with a big piece of machinery standing there for 90 minutes? I guess, you know, if you're going to do something like that, you you scope out the... Uh, <laughs> Clearly, the joint, and you, you go and see which cinemas have the active ushers. I mean, some of them you go to cinema and you sit in there and, you know, they're in there at the beginning and they don't come back in till the end. True. Um, anyway, nowadays they may have cameras and things in there, but yeah, <laughs> just just elbow the keyboard. But as we all know, really, cinema piracy uh, was orchestrated by that that big fat man with the devil eyes who, you know, put his branding iron in the fire while he was no doubt raping children and uh, selling drugs. Do you remember those adverts? The uh, video, video piracy funds oh, organised yeah, yeah, crime. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember them. Yeah, those adverts they were, were they were pretty condescending, to be honest. I actually thought a much better advert. Um, uh, there's, yeah, there's those ones where like you, you wouldn't steal a car. Yeah, you no, wouldn't steal. That a was book. the same. It's like, well, what if you would? First if, of all, yeah, if you would, would steal a book <laughs> from a bookstore. Then that legitimises yeah then, piracy. Then you can legally be a pirate but yeah one one more advert that again that was condescending as hell um because it, it was it was essentially trying to point out to people that piracy was stealing i'm pretty sure the people who were doing it was aware of that were aware of that i, I don't think that was going to change their actions. good england very good england um but yeah no the the one advert that i'd like to uh, reminisce which which I think was one of the only anti-cinema piracy adverts that actually hit the spot, that didn't condescend and just made a very good point, was, did you ever see that one where it was a, basically a guy goes to a market and there's the, obviously there's this ignorant guy going, uh, we need a pair, we need a pair, 50p, 50p DVDs. Yeah, the guy just like picks up a couple of ones he fancies, hands over the money, gets them home, he can hardly see anything, the colour and contrast are really bad there's lines going up and down the screen it keeps skipping and he goes back the next week and says mate these these dvds utter crap i want my money back please guy guy plays dumb don't know what you're talking about mate didn't get it from here and of course the guy doesn't have any rights whatsoever because obviously he's bought them from a con man i think personally that was the only one that actually worked i think that would actually make people think twice about buying you know supporting piracy in that way. We're going to talk now about online piracy. In other words, file sharing. Mike, give us some opening thoughts. Well, who can honestly say that they haven't dabbled in a little bit of 
less than legal activity with regards to the topic at hand. Can okay. you? So, let me just throw some moral dilemmas at you. There you go. Do you think it's right, Mike? Uh, okay, let me give this to you. Do you think it's right... Let me give this to you. ...that you... <laughs> <laughs> do you think it makes a difference the context in which people do things? Like, for instance, say someone downloads the odd file as a try-before-you-buy thing. They really like the track, they buy the album because of it. Otherwise, they wouldn't have heard the track. Is that a legitimate reason for file sharing existing? I guess, but, I mean, rules is rules. I mean, you can't... If you know, if you can't, if it's illegal, it's illegal. Because it's marketing, isn't it? Music is all about marketing. You know, from the payola of yeah. The, but if the, people are trying to get their music out there and heard, they're not the people that are, are charging people to listen to their music. Yeah. Do you think it's up to the uh, record labels, the big record labels, to to make more of a concerted effort to come up with schemes, websites, maybe, for instance, Facebook, right? Now, Facebook, we all know has targeted marketing okay we've discussed this before yes it, it, they post ads based on what you've clicked on and read and liked and posted yourself in the past okay why not come up with a website record labels come up with websites where you post music suggested music to people's Facebook profiles to say here's I don't know here's 20 tracks I'm we, sure th we are... thought you might like Similar things, really? Would you like me to, to Would you like to enlighten me as to these? Well, iTunes they have that genius thing. Which no, no, no. I'm not talking about that. Still, which that's still that's still good. No, that still puts it in your hands. You have to click on that and enable it. it what I'm saying is, it, what I'm saying it is, it finds the music for you. Like, yeah, but Mike, what I'm saying is, do do you think advertising is based on that then? Do you think advertising based on, uh, based on, oh, let's wait f till they click on our website and then we'll tell them about our product? It's about putting it in their face. Have a listen to these. Check them out. Yeah, but I thought we were talking about copyright, not advertising. I'm talking about ways that corporations could break the hold of file sharing potentially. And also, okay, mm. I'm, I can see that you're you're not getting my drift here. Let me put it another way. Is it really so difficult to shut down file sharing sites? I guess not. So how come they're not shut down more often? Very rarely do you see a story about a big file sharing website being shut down. For instance, companies employ hundreds, probably thousands, of people in their internet department specifically employed to, say, combat hackers or security breaches, or, you know, keep their security watertight. Are they, are they not employing any of these people to search out file sharing websites? I mean, people that, people talk about file sharing websites all the time on social networks and chat rooms, surely. Yeah, this is true. Is it really that difficult? Okay, well, why do you? What what I'm don't... saying what I'm saying is, if I come to the conclusion that I don't support file sharing, if I come to that conclusion, if I don't support it at all, or if I say it is completely illegal, no matter which way you try and spin it. Instead of coming out with grotesque legislation that ends up shutting down people posting their own stuff and, and you know, potentially shutting down sites like YouTube, why not do something practical and just oh, employ people to enforce the law by just searching out file sharing websites and shutting them down? They've, le they've got the legal right to do that. I don't understand why they don't do it more. I see what you're saying. You're saying... Yeah. So what you meant was, what about the new people like, that should try and get the music out there? That uh, have to use those. Yeah, that they're, they're sites, using those mediums at the moment. But it's the same sites that other people are using to illegally download. Exactly. Because well, there are uh, there are ways. There are legal ways, like YouTube. That you you. Like YouTube that, what's is probably face? the what was, best. What was that, old oh, boy? Go on. You know that geezer who's like made sodding loads now. Started up on YouTube. In fact, loads of people have started on YouTube that are now yeah. famous. YouTube is a, is fantastic, but y you they realise they, that the Sopra and Actabills essentially would have shut YouTube down. Yeah, well, obviously they were complete bollocks, and obviously people saw that, and that's why they're not. But to, well, I mean, to be honest, that's that seems to be the case with every right wing government comes up with this legislation. What I'm saying is, 
the law all is already on the side of corporations. All they need to do is. Well, I don't think you can say corporations set up sites for that. You know, up and coming new acts can put their music. No, on. no, no. That's 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 a side issue. That oh. what I'm saying is that should be done to try and combat the effects of file sharing. But if you're talking about shutting down file sharing, again, how difficult is it to find file sharing in websites? Well, right. If they want to cut down illegal, the illegal file sharing, yes. then just shut down the websites. There no. are. I think I think I think you could do many so, different approaches. I don't well, I think don't, necessarily continue to shut them down. Why they, well, they don't just shut them down? Neither do I. I, I mean, what, why do we need new legislation? There, there There's are, already legislation. Yeah, there are already ways that people can legally get their music out there if they are like new, up and coming people. And you know, okay, so make one big site that you. Pick that people can post and just monitor everything they put on there. Well, yeah. let, let's just quickly say that um, and get rid of all the original ones. Not only they want to do. Why do they not? Do yeah. It? They don't get well, it. no, exactly. I think it, it, if it's if it's a free file sharing website with no strings attached, surely it needs to be shut down. You know, that's what the law says. Find them and shut them down. They already have the legal means to do that. You don't need new legislation. This new legislation, right, what essentially it, it did was it put the onus on the site hosts, owners, to judge whether the stuff on there... Was copyright. Yeah, was. and then they would be punished if they allowed it. What you could do, if anything's breaching copyright, say on YouTube, again, legislation already exists. So, uh, things get taken off YouTube all the time for copyright breach. So it's already being enacted. So what I'm saying is, it's it, there's already legislation in place. It just isn't enacted very effectively. You don't need new legislation. You just need to enforce the legislation that is there better. Exactly. It's like saying, you know, for instance, it's like me saying, oh, there, there's there's a few pickpockets on the underground. I think we need to strip search every single person who goes on the underground from now on. I want to yeah. start going on the underground. Yeah. <laughs> Pirates. <laughs> Do you, do you think in, a, in another life you used to be a pirate? I think that I wish either in a in a previous or in a future life that I have or will be a pirate. It's definitely <laughs> a, an avenue I wish to explore Yeah. in, in this life or the next. Is, yeah, we'll, we'll build our own little dinghy, go and conquer some vessels on the high seas. I've already uh, got myself quite a big dinghy. Oh, <laughs> Armed only you with. Ride on this. Oh my god! What, what would be? What would we be armed with? Let's say. I've got uh, myself a sizable weapon, thank you. <sighs> okay, so Mike's going to take to the high seas to become <laughs> a pirate, armed with only his penis and meat sword. And on that despicable night, we're going to have to call this uh, call this a night for this for this particular episode of Late Night Large Piracy. It's been a lot of fun, and hopefully, it will continue to be a lot of fun. People. I'm going to do my uh, my weekly run. Get your ass on Facebook. Get yours to Mars. Get yours to Mars. No, get yours to Facebook. All right? Late Night Large. Like the page. You know what I'm saying. All right? How are you trying to play, brother? All right? <laughs> get on there. Don't even trip. Like it. Wait, wait, wait. But I think the kind of people who listen to this show probably do like it. What we're trying to say well, is... Well, encourage other people friends, to. Get your friends to like it. Get your friends. Your, your friends are your friends. Your, your friends are your friends, your friends, nephews, sisters, cousins, uncle. Do it. They all need to like it. More communication from you is key. Otherwise, Always. I'm going to bust out Des and Troy and, <laughs> and start unleashing pain. And you don't want that. Off we go to Yo-Ho-Ho and a bottle of rum. <laughs> <laughs>